I have another flashlight review for you today. This time it is the Claris XT21X Pro. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this light, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a few things I want to mention. First, I'd like to thank Claris for reaching out to me and offering to send this flashlight so that I could share it with you. Now, this is my first Claris flashlight, and I have looked at them before, but my overall impression of most of the Claris flashlights is that they are a tactical designed light, not necessarily a camping light. And uh, I don't really want tactical lights anymore. I'm past that point in my career, and now I'm just looking for primary general use lights or camping lights. The tactical aspect is not something I'm interested in. However, when they showed me this light, I could see where it's a good crossover between the two for a number of reasons. Not only the physical design of it, especially with the dual end cap operating switch and side operating switch, but also that it has two modes. You can set it for tactical, which I will be explaining, and you can set it for camping mode, which is what I have it set up in. All right, so what we'll do is we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over its physical and performance specifications specifications. I'll go over its modes of operation both in tactical and in camping mode and then of course we'll get outside and do some testing. All right, just before we take a closer look at the Claris X-T21X Pro, I thought I'd share with you what it came with, so let's put it aside for a second. So when I opened the box, I was impressed with the number of things that were inside, but this is what impressed me the most, this holster. I have looked at a lot of holsters that come with a lot of flashlights, and this is by far the best one I've seen yet. It is not an afterthought. This was actually well thought out, and is something I would have used on my duty belt to carry this flashlight in. One of the things I I like about it is the fact that it is quite heavy duty in nature. It is reinforced nylon webbing. It has a bit of padding in the front and back of it for protection of the light. And one more thing that it has inside for protection is this tiny plastic cup. And the purpose of that cup is to protect the end of your flashlight because there's a dual operating switch here, which we'll talk about more in a few minutes time. So it protects it from accidentally being turned on as well from any damage if it were to get knocked to the ground. The uh, belt attachments on the back, there's actually two of them. There's a loop inside underneath this second loop on the outside, and it's fixed, the inside one. However, the second loop is Velcro-operated, so if you want to use it on a smaller belt, then you can. If you want to use it on a duty belt, then this one would adjust to a side. It does also come with a D-ring. Super nice holster. So impressed with that. Let me put that out of the way and share what else it came with did come with a lanyard. Now, I don't often use lanyards on, my light, lanyards on my light, but it did make me think about the days back on patrol when I would have to tag along behind one of the canine officers on a search, and basically it was just a matter of trying to keep up with them. But that's when a lanyard like this would have come in handy, so that I could put this around my wrist and I wouldn't have to worry about dropping it in the middle of the woods and finding myself without a light. So yeah, that's nice to have. Still something I probably won't use much now. It does, does come with this pocket clip. I will tell you that the pocket clip was installed on the light, but I did take it off because this is a big light. The chances of me actually carrying that in my pocket are pretty slim, but it's nice to know that you have it and it's an option for you. Uh, it did come with this small accessory pouch and inside of the accessory pouch is a single O-ring that would be for this end of the light where the tail cap comes off and I'll demonstrate that in a moment. And two adapters. One of the adapters is a USB type A to USB type C and that'll go with the cable I showed you. I'm not quite sure what the second adapter is. I think it's for an Apple phone. I could be wrong on that, but I don't own an Apple, but maybe I can show it to you and somebody can uh, correct me if you know what exactly what this one is for. Why don't I do that? Just grab it out. Hey, right, can you tell me what that one's for? I'm not quite sure. All right, I'll just leave that in the comments if you know, of course. Now, two, three th more things. This is kind of nice to have as an option. May not use it very often, but it, it does give you the option. This is an adapter tube for an 18650 battery. So the standard battery that comes with this flashlight is a Claris 21700 battery, 5000 milliamps, so a good quality battery without question. But if you wanted to sub that out for the slightly smaller 18650, you would put it inside this adapter and then put it inside the light. But uh, again, I would only do that if I didn't have another 21700 to put in it because they have so much more storage capacity in them. So but we'll put that aside. 
This is the charging cable that came with it. It is a USB to US or USB C to USB C fast charge cable. And the reason it is this is because you can charge this with fast charge, P F PD fast charge, but also you can use this as a power bank. I'll talk more to that in a few moments' time. So you would plug it into the flashlight, plug the other end into whatever device needs charging, and you can do that. Yet at the same time, if you need to charge the light, that's where that USB A to USB-C adapter comes in. And finally, of course, there is the operating manual and warranty information, all good to have. Let me put those items out of the way. Let's bring the flashlight back in. So just a few key features before we get in the specifications. And one of them is, is that this has a dual tail switch on it. So it has a temporary on off button, as well as this lever, lever switch here. Plus it has another switch here on the side that will do a lot of the same functions. Here is, while well, I've got it open, may as well show you the USB Type-C charging port with quite a thick cover on it. It's not one I think is likely gonna come off. Uh, no, nice, nicely well built. Comment that I often want to make on flashlights is just how easy is it to find and index your finger or your thumb on the operating switch on the side? Well, it's not bad. It's actually better than most because it is slightly raised right here. So rotating it around, it's easy to find. The only issue is I'm not sure if it is the button or if it's the charging port, because they're both the same in terms of the, the tactile sensing of them. But then again, they're always going to be able to find the end cap, and you can do everything with this light from the tail switches. Okay, the uh, last thing I want to say in terms of key features is that it does come with a five-year warranty. All right, let's move on to the physical specifications. As far as the physical specifications go for the light, it is comes in at an overall length of six and three eighths inches, which is 162 millimeters. The diameter at the basal, its widest point is one and five eighths inches or 40 millimeters. And the diameter at the tail cap is one and one eighth inches or 27 millimeters. I did weigh this with the battery and it comes in at an even eight ounces or 220 six grams. It is rated with a waterproof rating of IPX8 and it does have an impact resistance rating of one meter. All right, let's go over the performance specifications for the light. So it does have a turbo setting of 4,400 lumens, which is quite high when you think about it. That's pretty good. It'll last for three and a half minutes before it starts to step down. Now, it's not a simple step down to another lumen setting. It depends on the heat. So it has a, a capability to sense just how hot it is getting, and it will step down accordingly. So it may have two or three different lumen settings before it steps down as it steps down. So otherwise it will run for two and a half hours. Now at high, it has 1500 lumens, which will run for four hours. At medium, it has 400 lumens, which will run for nine hours. At low, it has 100 lumens, which will run for 30 hours. And it has a moonlight setting of five lumens, which will run for 200 hours. Now, I just mentioned here that most flashlights have a moonlight setting of around one lumen. So I thought this might be a little bit bright, but it's not. It's actually, it works out very well for this light. It does have a strobe mode, which will run at 4,400 lumens for five hours. And an SOS mode, which will run at 100 lumens for 65 hours. I thought I'd just take a moment to go through some of the physical features of the lights before we move on to the operation, give you a few close-ups. So one of the things that you would be interested in is the design of the reflector. And this is quite a deep reflector. And my initial thought is that this would be a great throwing flashlight because of the depth of that reflector. But it does have that orange peel look to the inside of it, as it's referred to, which usually indicates more of a floodlight. So what it, I found out is that this is actually a great balance between flood and throw. You get both of them and uh, yeah, it just works out very well that way. Now we'll run our ways down the side. As you can see, there's some heat dissipation rings built in here. Here is the side switch for it. And on the other side is the USB Type-C charging port. Now I'll just point out here, one of the things I look for on a flashlight is how easily can I find the on off switch? without looking at it. Can I find it easily with my thumb or my finger? And this is better than most in that it's a bit raised right here and you know, tactile feel is pretty good. The only issue is 
yeah, so is the <laughs> charging port. So there's a chance that you will mistake one for the other, but that's not such a bad thing after all, because of course, everything can be found and operated by the dual tail switch, which we'll talk about how that operates in a few minutes time. You're never gonna miss those two as long as you can get your thumb onto the back of it. All right, so uh, good looking overall light. One of the things I wanna point out is it does have crenellations around the top of the bezel. They're not as pronounced as they are on a lot of tactical lights, and I really appreciate that because those crenellations are kind of a, an impact weapon, a backup weapon that you may have to use it for to protect yourself or defend yourself with, and that's not something I'm interested in anymore. It's nice that this still has that capability without being really protruding and really obvious. Overall, look at this light is really, really quite nice. Let's just go down to the dual tail cap and we'll show you that before we explain how it operates. And there's a small hole on either side where you can attach the lanyard. Now let's go into the operation. All right, let's go through the operation of this light. Now, you please bear with me. It is going to sound a little complicated as we get started. And the reason is, is there are so many different features and options that this light provides that it does take a bit of time to get to understand them. So there is a learning curve on the operating system for this light. Fortunately, some of the most basic features are very intuitive, very, very simple indeed. So when the light arrives, it is set by default to the tactical mode. And as I mentioned, there is another mode which we will switch to in a moment known as the camping mode, the one that I think I'm probably gonna prefer in the long run. But let's just talk about the tactical mode first. So, first thing you have to understand is the names for all the different switches. The button on the end is the primary switch. The lever one beside it is known as the mode switch. And the one on the side, strangely enough, is known as the side switch. Let's start with the end switches. If you press the primary switch in a part way, it'll come on in turbo. You can see how bright that is. I don't want to flash the camera too much. If you press it all the way in, it'll stay on in constant turbo. And then you can turn it off. If you press on the mode switch, you'll get instant strobe. If you press and hold the mode switch for about two seconds or longer, you'll get a continuous strobe. Press it and release. Now, let's move over to the side switch. We will be coming back to the end switches in a minute, but let's move over to the side switch. So if you press the side switch, it'll come on in whatever the last lumen setting was that you use it. So that's nice to know. So in turning it on right now, it is on in turbo. If I press it again, it'll cycle down through from turbo to high, to medium, to low, to moonlight. And press it again, it just cycles backwards. So it cycles from the top down. In order to turn it off, you have to long press the light and it will turn off. Now let's go back to the end switch again. And here is how you can do the same thing using the end switch. In order to access the medium, high, low, and moonlight. Start by turning on the turbo with a full click. Now press the mode switch and it will cycle down through. And you can turn it off again by pressing the primary switch again. All right, that was tactical. So a little bit of a learning curve, but the nice thing is if you wanna use this as a tactical flashlight, the two switches on the end are your two primary things that you're gonna use. You have instant turbo with the primary, and you have instant strobe with the mode switch. What I like about this is that you can set it up so that if you do want to have moonlight, which is actually more of an advantage than most people would realize in a tactical situation, then you can do that with the side switch. Why is moonlight or low such a tactical advantage? Maybe you don't want to be seen. You don't want all the bright light that turbo and strobe will provide. You just want to be able to see if you're inside your patrol car or if you're trying to move around somewhere without attracting attention. That's when you want moonlight, moonlight or low. 
The ad added adventure, of course, added advantage, of course, is that it doesn't blind you and it doesn't ruin your night vision, or at least as badly. All right, now we're going to move over to the camping mode. To change modes on this, and this took me a while to master, and I'm not sure I still have it mastered, we are going to do this. We're going to press on the mode switch. We're going to hold it down for a full five seconds or longer. And then we're going to fully click the primary switch. So when I do this, it's going to strobe for a full five seconds. And I'll count it out loud. And let's see if we can't do this correctly. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. Full click. Now I'll turn it off. Now what I should have is the camping mode engaged. Now with the camping mode, we get something different again. With the mode switch, if I press it, I get just short presses of whatever the last lumen setting is, and we can change that. If I press the primary, I get the same thing basically. But if I press the primary in and lock it in, then press the mode switch, it will cycle through the different lights. So that's working out pretty good. I kind of like that so that you don't always have to have turbo or strobe using these two buttons. Press it again and it turns it off. Coming back to the side switch. It works pretty much the same way it did in the tactical mode. It'll have memory for the last mode used, so I turn it on. And right now it is, you barely see it of course, in moonlight. Tap it again, get it so you're in focus, and it moves all the way up to turbo. Tap it again, high, medium, low, and back down to moonlight again. Long press to turn it off. All right, there are two more features of the operating system I want to show you before we get outside with this light. And the first is to talk about charging. So charging is done through the USB Type-C port that I showed you on the side. And once you plug it in, the light that's built into the side switch, the little LED will be red and will stay red until the light is fully charged, at which point it will turn green. And that's how you'll know it is charged. What's nice about this light not that you can see a lot of application for it, but it is nice if you really have to have your light with you and on, even though the battery is all but dead, is you can still use the flashlight in moon, low, and medium levels while it is charging. So, yeah, there is some benefit to knowing that as well. And the last feature is the electronic lockout. So all good flashlights will have an electronic lockout. To be honest, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary for this light if you're going to be carrying this in the whole. There's very little chance that you'll accidentally or unintentionally turn it on. However, if you are carrying it in your pocket, then it is something you want to know about. To access the electronic lockout, all you need to use it is all done from this side switch. Here it is here. Uh, while it's off, press and hold the side switch down for five full seconds, and that locks it. To unlock it, it's not the reverse as you might think it is. It's actually tap the or triple tap the side switch. Uh, rapidly and that will unlock the light. So very, very simple and it's worth practicing a few times to make sure you understand how you do that. Having gone over the key features as well as the physical and performance specifications and the modes of operation for this light, let's get outside and do some testing. We're doing some nighttime testing for the Claris XT21X Pro. Let's start it off on moonlight because moonlight on this light actually does have a fair amount of illumination, at least close at hand, 15 feet out or so. See the side of my house, but it's really not going any further. Let's take it up to low. Low is pretty bright though. I'm starting to see around the yard quite a bit. Not really good, but it is. That's probably 50, 60 feet to the garage there. Medium, on the other hand, is starting to really light things up. High. I don't think I'd have to use it much higher than this, but there you go. That's the highest. Pretty much all flood. Nice, bright, very little central hotspot. What there is kind of fades into the flood very well. Lights up this whole backyard nicely. All right, let's wrap this video up with a few closing comments for the Claris XT21X 
Pro. What do I like most about this light? Certainly it is the beam cast on this thing. It has a good distant beam cast and it has a great lumen level at turbo. As you saw, there is a central hot spot as well as some spill or flood around the outside, but the transition is quite gradual. So you get a nice overall beam cast on this. That's what I think I like most about it. I do like all the different options it provides you in the operating system, despite the fact that it took me quite a while to get a handle on them, how to switch from tactical over to camping, how to use the different buttons for the different lumen settings and the different functions they provide. I actually do like it. I will say though, there was a learning curve on that. Quite often, most people are probably going to stay with just the basics. Many people will never switch it between tactical and camping. They'll pick one or the other and stay with it. Truth, truthfully, I'm probably going to switch it over to camping and stay there because I don't have that need for an instant turbo or an instant strobe that this does provide. So there is both a pro and a con. The pro is all the versatility you get. The con is the learning curve to get to that. At least for me, you may find it just very intuitive and very simple. There certainly is a good quality build in these Claris lights. It's, it's very, very impressive. If you're not aware of Claris lights, and I think most people are by now, they are right at the top of the uh, quality construction and value for the dollar, for sure. I think I mentioned it early in the video, that sheath is great. It is actually the best sheath I have ever received with a flashlight, bar none. That's just my, my simple comment. So if you do see yourself using your flashlight as a piece of duty equipment, as a police officer, security officer, firefighter, paramedic, or any type of first responder, or you just like to have a flashlight on your side, in on your belt for where whatever your work requirements are, then this is definitely the best holster, best flashlight combination that I have seen so far. Yeah, there is a lot to like about this light. So what I'm going to do is open it up to you. Do you have this flashlight? Have you any thoughts or comments on it? If you do, please put them in the comments section below. If you have any questions about it, put those in the comments section below. I will, of course, put all the information that I have given you so far, all the specifications for it, as well as the links to where you can purchase it in the video description. All right, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.